Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the council meeting of June 20th, 2011. Please remember the times indicated to the agenda items are approximate start times, and please turn off your cell phones and pagers. Will the city clerk please call the roll? Thank you. Um, and just for council's knowledge and the audience's knowledge, uh, we had changed one of the voting boards for Mr. Diaz. This one um, has not been changed, so for tonight you probably will see Mr. Johnson's name still up on the wall. Okay. Um, but for a meeting where Mayor Natal sits, you'll see that and we'll get that corrected. Okay. Um, so tonight, Mr. Diaz, your light will flash, but go ahead and press that uh, when I call your name. Um, but just for the voting purposes for the few items tonight, that one uh, we didn't catch when we were uh, making some adjustments. So, Thank with that you for said, that. With that said, Mayor Pro Tem Snyder. Here. And is your light flashing, ma'am? Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Councilman Moreno. Here. Councilman Benson. Here. Councilwoman Carson. Here. Councilwoman Teeter. Here. Councilman Diaz? Here. Councilman McEldowney? Here. Councilman Bullock? Mayor Pro Tem, you have a quorum. Thank you, ma'am. Will the audience please rise for a moment of silence and join us in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance? States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Will the, will the staff please pass around a microphone? And the council invites everyone to introduce themselves. Danny Thomas. Danny Thomas. Bob Zyler. Ellen Haug. Ashley Martinez. Fernanda de Luna. Gerard Tushafi. Larry Quintana. Guillermo Cerna. Jean Leffel, Board of Adjustment. Joy Bishop. Leanne Noel. George Maxey. Terry Kuhn. Virginia Longoria. Gilana Ripkin. Don Burns. Christopher Schaffner. John Howard, Information Technology. Michelle Hill, Economic Development. Ms. Ryan Cordero, Government Relations. Phil Baca, Chief of Police. Brittany Morris, Director of Economic Development. Ed Newberry. It says I'm unplugged. Daniel O'Leary. Thank you, everyone. Tonight, the City Council and the staff would like to recognize the recipients of the Quality Community Foundation Scholarship. Proceeds from the annual Quality Community Foundation Scholarship Golf Tournament fund the scholarships. This year, the Quality Community Foundation voted to award three students with scholarships. Is there anyone here from the Quality Community Foundation? Would you please come forward? And if Council will join us down at the podium, we can award these individuals with their certificates. Back in February, we started early planning um, 
try to get as many candidates out this year. Excuse me, one moment. There you go. Um, back in February, we started a, pro a new process. Basically, I went out to the schools trying to recruit um, quality candidates. I offered up my time to um, meet with individual students to help get um, more information out to the students and to ensure that um, we had quality candidates. Um, and the three young ladies who we're going to pre um, present the awards to today um, definitely showed um, that they were qualified candidates. They've worked extremely hard for their last four years with their community service, um, schools, and some athletics. So we can start now, and we want to present three. And actually, we were scheduled to to a, um, give out two scholarships, and because we had three really good candidates, we were able to do three. Okay. Okay. And each student will receive four thousand dollars for four years. Okay. Nice. Duratu Shappi, come on up. <laughs> Ashley Martinez. Fernanda de Luna. Well, we have no camera tonight, but congratulations to everybody. Try the phone deal here. We're going to try it. And we'll try Jason's too. Be better than mine. All right, we'll do it. All right. Ready? Wonderful. Thank you. Congratulations, the three of you, and I wish you all the luck in your future. I have a feeling you all three of you are going to do great things. So thank you so much, and congratulations. Okay, I will now ask City Manager Jerry Flannery to ask staff to please come forward and invite the representatives from Access Housing to begin their presentation. Thank you, Madam Mayor Pro Tem. I'd like to invite the Executive Director, Virginia Longoria, up to the microphone to make a presentation. Hello. Hello. How good are you? Evening. I'm I'm well. How are you? Good. Thank you. Good okay. to see you. It's good to see all of you. Thank you, um, Councilwoman, and Councilman, for this time, this opportunity to present a request to you. I'm actually not here um, as a representative, but of Access Housing, but rather as a representative of the Blue Ribbon Commission to End Homelessness in Adams County. And we are here with a very specific request. We would like you to provide us a grant of $5,000 for the planning process um, that we are currently um, involved with to end homelessness in Adams County. I'd like to introduce uh, my friends and colleagues, the first of whom is Chris Schaffner from the Adams County Housing Authority. Donald Burns and Don, if you would join me to talk a little bit about other sources of funding that we have secured already. Um, the funds that we are asking you to consider in the amount of $5,000 would serve as match funding um, mm -hmm. for a grant that we received from an anonymous donor. Great. Thank you. Welcome. Good evening. 
Uh, <clears throat> as Virginia said, my name is uh, Donald Burns, and in addition to being a member of the Blue Ribbon Commission, I'm also a member of an organization called the Housing and Homelessness Funders Collaborative, which is a group made up of staff from various foundations, local foundations in the metro area. Foundations including the Denver Foundation, the Piton Foundation, uh, the Anschutz Family Fa uh, Fund, um, the Mile High United Way, um, the Bloom Foundation, and the Key Bank. Uh, this group has already decided to make a small grant as seed money for the planning activity for this Blue Ribbon Commission. And an individual member of that um, <clears throat> group uh, organization has also uh, pledged a $5,000 uh, matching challenge grant uh, to the organization. So uh, the group is very excited about uh, this effort, and we trust that um, you will join us in that effort. Thank you. Thank you. Before I bring Galana Ritkin up to present um, the progress we've, uh, we've made with the 10-year plan, I want to give you some background. Um, the Blue Ribbon Commission came together as a one of three initiatives of what we call the Adams County Homeless to Home uh, Partnership. The Adams County Homeless to Home Partnership was formed in 2008 by a group of nonprofits that serve homeless populations, uh, including the Adams County Housing Authority, Access Housing, Almost Home, and Growing Home. And prior to the formation of the H2H Partnership, homelessness was a conversation that took part as a subcommittee of what was once known as the Adams County Housing Task Force. Our desire was to elevate the conversation and to bring awareness and support uh, toward the end, toward the eradication of homelessness across Adams County. And so we formed the H2H partnership and we developed three initiatives, the first of which is the 10-year plan to end homelessness, uh, which is comprised of the Blue Ribbon Commission, there are about 36 members that serve on the Blue Ribbon Commission. Uh, Galana will give you more information about the progress we have made to date. How, however, I will tell you that Don Quick serves as the chair of the Blue Ribbon Commission, and other members include Adams County Commissioners uh, Skip Fisher and Eric Hansen, and, of course, all of the mayors from across Adams County, including our own mayor, Mayor Paul Natal. Um, the other two initiatives of the H2H partnership include the Cold Weather Care uh, Community Collaborative. Currently in Adams County, there is no emergency shelter, and so we rely on partnerships with churches to provide emergency shelter during winter months. Uh, this last winter, we provided uh, shelter for over 60 households, uh, in addition to the services that were provided by Almost Home, Growing Home, and Access Housing. I can tell you that there are about 2,000 homeless persons in Adams County, most of whom are concentrated in Commerce City, uh, as well as Thornton and Westminster, although Commerce City uh, holds the lion's share of the homeless in Adams County, which is why we are here to request your support. This is an unprecedented opportunity and historic event that is occurring uh, in, in the county, and we are very pleased with the support that we have garnered so far and with the participation of elected officials as well as informal leaders throughout the community. So that's uh, the, oh, the other initiative. The third initiative of the H2H partnership is what we call the Strong Families Initiative, working with uh, school district, Adams County School District 14, Adams County Housing Authority, Life, Access Housing, Almost Home, and Growing Home. We provide self-sufficiency services and emergency shelter for homeless and low-income populations across Adams County. So those are our three initiatives. Again, um, we're pleased with the formation of the Blue Ribbon Commission and to share with you some of the progress that we've made to date is Galana Ritkin. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. I'll try to be brief and thank you for having us tonight. Um, under the direction of Don Quick, the Commission has moved very quickly. Uh, they've only met twice. They meet quarterly. In the first meeting alone, they were able to uh, agree um, as a Commission that the plan for Adams County would be in alignment with the federal plan and adopt 
the homeless definition um, under the federal plan, which includes both at-risk, housed, and unhoused individuals who are in the homeless system. So with that in mind, the plan itself is meant to be fairly comprehensive and address the prevention needs as well as the displacement needs of families and individuals in Adams County. Um, the other, uh, I think, four major progresses is that, that we've made thus far are the be beginning of a rural initiative to make sure that the rural communities outside of the, the more urban and suburban areas in the county are well represented and have a voice um, in what this plan will address. Um, the commission as a whole has adopted a whole family, whole child model for families to make sure that the needs of the children who are experiencing extreme poverty or homelessness are met within this process and the services that develop out of it, um, as well as to initiate, to allow us as a team um, to begin to initiate some low-key discussions around how we can better collaborate rigidly to leverage resources and make sure that the state's involvement and the profile of the state's monies obviously um, stay high on our radar as we look at how to implement and how to set forth uh, with making this plan work. Um, the work groups that we've already put together and have begun to meet around economic development, services, housing, governance, um, valuation, and we will soon look at funding and sustainability so that by the time you get to the implementation of the Adams County Plan, you will have a seed pot uh, of money so that you may actually begin to do that uh, without having to have that lag time. Um, as we move forward, uh, by September I'll be drafting the framework for the plan and then in December, we'll review goals and strategies as they begin to come out of the groups. Um, by the first quarter, we'll be drafting the plan and finalize that in the April to June period so that the commission itself can review, edit, and ratify the plan by August 2012. So if you have any questions about the process or any progress that we have or have not made. Well, I would just like to say that, you know, I think that this commission is doing such a great job. It's truly my honor to be able to work with you, all of you, and I'm, it's, I've just seen it just grow so quickly, and it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful um, group, and it's going to do great things, and I'm just, I'm, I'm really honored to, to be able to have the opportunity to work with all of you, so thank you so much. Councilman Moreno? Thank you for your presentation. Um, I don't really have questions so much as a, a comment. Um, you know, I think Access Housing does phenomenal work in our community. Um, it's so important uh, to this community that we make sure that everyone has safe and adequate housing. Um, you know, I, I remember first getting on council and hearing a pretty startling t a statistic that um, I'm not sure if it was the largest growing number of homeless population or if they were the largest number, uh, but that demographic is actually single mothers. Yes. And Yes. And that's that's scary, um, and it's unfortunate, uh, especially because um, a lot of times those kids don't have a, a choice in the matter, um, and it affects their student achievement. Um, it affects their, their development, their childhood development. Um, so I, I think that, you know, you're doing fantastic work, and I um, am more than, than happy for this council to support you in this endeavor. Thank you. Councilwoman Teeter. Yes, thank you, and thank you for all the hard work and efforts you put into this program. Are we looking for a consensus tonight on matching the uh, 5,000? City Attorney Gaylor, would you direct us on how we can, if we yes. direct, can we go ahead and um, have an agreement or a motion? When, when discussion is completed, it would be appropriate to uh, make a motion Great. to direct staff to proceed with appropriate action to uh, finalize the uh, the request that's been submitted this evening. Thank uh, you, sir. To finalize a response to, to the request that's submitted this evening. And, and I will do that after further discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman McEldowney. I'm sorry, Councilman McEldowney. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, same question as Councilman Teeter, but I also just wanted to say, again, uh, to echo Mr. Moreno's comments and the earlier comments, thank you guys for all that you're doing. I, this is obviously a problem that no one city, no one group can solve on their own, and so to have the coalition that's taking shape here I think is is great. Um, the plan sounds solid. I, I like the, uh, the progression that you outlined, um, especially the, the foresight to have the, the monies in place so that as that plan gets finalized that action can proceed. It's often frustrating to get to the end of that planning cycle and then there's just long wait time before sort of round two starts. So it sounds like good good planning and I hope that that continues and uh, 
again, I, I would encourage us to, to also support this measure and help help this thing get some traction. Thank you, sir. Councilwoman Carson. I also just want to take this time to thank you for all your hard work and commitment. Um, the work you do is phenomenal, and I also encourage this council to get behind you and support you in any way that we possibly can. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Madam Mayor Pertem. Yes, sir. <clears throat> if I may, um, if it's not to prejudge the consensus that I think <laughs> I see, um, but what I would recommend is since we are looking at a reappropriation ordinance to come back to council probably next week, mm -hmm. we can we can put that amount in that reappropriation ordinance. That would be great. Uh, that way they could get it quickly. Second reading will probably be late July. That would be great. Thank you. Councilman Diaz. Hello, guys. Um, just like everybody else, I hate to sound like a broken record, but I really do appreciate the work that you guys do. Um, I'm very familiar with the work that Access Housing does. Um, I've done a whole lot of research on things that Access Housing does. And I know that I've been very fortunate to have been born um, to a family um, with six kids and the two parents. And, and I can't express how feared I was growing up thinking that, man, how am I going to make sure that I'm not homeless growing up? And I know that there are a lot of kids who aren't as lucky as I am. And so I think it's the responsibility of our council just to make sure that we're doing everything we can to support organizations like you guys who are doing everything you can to prevent that from happening. So I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I would encourage anyone out there that wants to find out more about uh, the 10-year the plan to end homelessness and the committee um, and the work that it's doing. You know, we do have information on that. I'd be happy to share with anyone out there in the audience that might want to um, know more about it or anyone that wants to contact me. Um, the CSI study that was done, I think, was very enlightening about the situation that's out there and the fact that uh, in, in 2011 it showed 1,500 homeless persons in the county, most of whom were women and families. I sit, when you sit there and think about that, that's really scary, especially, you know, when you're thinking about women and children, you know, sleeping in cars, you know, sleeping in the streets. It's, it's just absolutely horrifying and it's something, you know, as strong as this still going on at this time. And so that's why it's so important that I know that we get this done for you and we get it done quickly. So just again, my appreciation um, for everything that you're doing. And so, Councilwoman Teeter, for a motion? Well, I hope I do this correctly. Move to reappro reappro reappropriate, <laughs> reappropriate 5, the funds uh, to match the $5,000 donation to Adams County Blue Ribbon Commission. Councilman Diaz. Second the motion. I second yeah. the motion. Can I see yeah. your notes, Ken? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I have a motion and a second. Okay, great. Thank you. Just to clarify, that uh -huh. the, it's the direction to staff to yes. handle direction the, to staff. To handle the reappropriation ordinance, and they'll get that in the ordinance then when it comes to you in the near future. That'd be great. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Thank you very much, and you will get your $5,000, and let us know if there's anything else we can do to help. Thank you so much. You are very um, welcome. Just in closing, I wanted to um, recognize Brittany and the staff from the Economic Development Office. Lisa Wayne has been uh, actively involved in our Economic Development Committee, and without her involvement and support, I would not have been able to bring on the other Adams County ED agencies. So thanks again, Brittany. Thanks. Wonderful. Thanks to you all. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Okay, we are now on to citizen communication. Two public comment rosters were made available at the table on the entrance to council chambers for those who wish to address council this evening. One roster is for non-agenda items and the second is for action items listed on the agenda. The council is reminded not to engage in discussion or debate, but may ask clarifying questions. First person I have on the list is Mr. Ed Newberry. If you'll come forward, sir, and state your name and address for the record, that'd be great. Thank you. Ed Newberry, 9288 East 109th Avenue um, in the Bell Creek neighborhood. Okay. Could I bring you those pictures? Sure. Thank you, sir.
Thank you, sir. Um, just a little advertisement for Bell Creek on top there. You can see uh, a brief chronology of the Bell Creek area. And on the back is a map of the Bell Creek area. Um, the area highlighted in yellow there is the area I'm addressing where the graffiti and uh, the damage to the trees has occurred recently. Um, we've had uh, 12 trees uh, with a caliber of uh, four to five inches broken off at about two feet above the ground, suggesting that it was a heavy vehicle doing it. Um, they do about one a month. Um, my purpose here is is not to suggest in any way that I'm not getting full cooperation from neighborhood services or the police department. Um, I'm here begging. I'm looking uh, for maybe a uh, surveillance camera. <clears throat> uh, if we could get a surveillance camera, I think we could save a lot of money that we're, uh, we're spending right now washing graffiti off. Uh, we haven't addressed the trees yet. I know those will be about uh, probably five to six hundred dollars a piece. I don't know if you have funds or anything in mind um, to assist uh, a neighborhood in replacing trees that are, that are damaged. Um, we're replacing quite a few that we have that are dying and so forth, but um, this additional burden of uh, the vandals has put a strain on the resources. I'm sure you're familiar with that. We are. Thank you, sir. Did you have more to add? or That's it. I'm just here begging. Oh, I appreciate that. Councilman Benson. I wonder how much. Oh. I think we're having surveillance a camera cost. Um, <laughs> These mics. You know, I drag you in. It depends on the camera. Actually, I'm going to speak to some surveillance cameras in my presentation tonight. Great. But they Great. cost about $4,000. Good. All right. Because I noticed that uh, judging by the signatures on this graffiti, it's all, it's mostly the same person. Yeah. I mean, part, of, part of the disgusting piece on that near the back you can see is where they put graffiti on top of graffiti. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, Thank you. The blank spot. The blank spot. Step, step back. You're good. Just step back a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think they're having some trouble, Laura. No, he's just, he's too, go ahead. Start speaking. Um, hello. Yeah. The blank spot that you see towards the back is two of the 12 trees. You can see a stretch of grass there where the trees were snapped off and we had to cut them off of the ground to uh, to remove the foot and a half or two foot stump that was sticking up. Um, all of that's occurred within the last year. Okay. Councilwoman Teeter. Yes, good evening. Um, earlier or later last week, Ms. Carson brought this to my attention. I don't know if it was you that contacted her or not, but I have a daughter and a son-in-law and three grandchildren that live on Bell Creek Boulevard. Um, I think it's ridiculous. It, it infuriates me that people have to, to do this type of vandalism. And um, I am all for looking into getting a surveillance camera. Thank you for bringing this forward and bringing it to our attention, sir. Thank you. Councilman McEldowney? Uh, may I interject here? Yes. We're in citizen communication, yes. and normally what you do is you refer the issue to the city manager's right. office for appropriate inquiry and then come back to you with the report. Correct. But certainly it's council's prerogative to deviate from your policy if you choose to do that. Um, I, this is, I will do that then, but I thought at one time we were talking about changing that policy. We never changed that. No. Okay. I refer this to you, Mr. City Manager. Thank you. <laughs> I still have a few other council people on the board. Do you still wish to speak to Bob? <laughs> okay, Councilman McEldowney to the city attorney. Mr. Geller has a habit of making that comment just before I uh, plan to make that comment. <laughs> um, I did have a, a comment, though, in that definitely concerned about the issue. Um, we had a similar spate of graffiti occurring in the, the Reunion neighborhood and areas around Reunion and the new... Uh, underpass along 104th there at Second Creek and I think 
there were initial concerns that it was gang related and if I am not mistaken at the end of the day it was just kids with spray cans and so um, I don't know if the same assessment has been made of the tagging in, in that neighborhood but um, once they were able to find the the culprit in, in, in question the issue went away um, yeah I I think more than the graffiti um, we're all concerned about those trees that they're snapping off because they're doing it with a vehicle obviously because right. the trees are too large for anyone to snap off uh, can you hear me all right? Yeah, I, I can yes. hear you okay. You know, and, and totally understand. And I, I guess my, my only thought was, um, in addition to referring it, is just to look at whether where the appropriate split of responsibility is between the Homeowners Association and the city in this regard, in that understand that it's a big hit. Um, I know that the Metro District that supports the neighborhood that I live in has has to allocate a portion of those funds for tree replacement where they're damaged, whether it's through an accidental hit in the winter with a slip on ice or through death through uh, through disease. And so um, I just want to make sure we, we're taking on a responsibility that's appropriate for the city to take on, if that makes sense. Not that it's not an issue that we want to help with where we can, and I think certainly would encourage the city manager's office and the police department to look at what measures we can help bring to the to, to the resolution. I understand. Um, we have replaced 12 trees this spring mm -hmm. which were diseased or dying. Um, and this is over and above that. This is just out and out vandalism. I understand. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Councilwoman Carson. Uh, Mr. Newberry, thank you for coming. Um, yeah, the car wash was uh, These mics are having trouble. had graffiti done up above the roof line there, and you could see that that uh, it was painted over with a, a little darker gray, and that was about uh, two weeks before this rash that went through there. Um, incidentally, the uh, neighborhood services group has uh, has paid to have a, a group come out and clean up all of that graffiti. And it's gone now. And can you tell me um, the damage that's happened to these trees? Was it all done on one incident? Or is it no, it's one at a time, about a month apart. Okay. So it looks like a deliberate sort of an action. Right, and so they're coming back and just taking another one. Yes. Thank you. Again, I would like to just remind council to direct your comments to City Attorney Gaylor, if you can, as, our, as per our policy. Councilman Moreno? Can only try. <laughs> we have one. Um, the problem is catching these folks. Um, they appear to like um, the wee hours of the morning or the late hours of the night, which is why I'm here begging for a camera, because I, I I don't believe that uh, the chief has resources to park someone on Bell Creek Boulevard overnight um, for seven days a week. Um, but a camera might get us a license plate number at least of the guy that's snapping off the trees. Okay, City Attorney Gaylor, would you like to? My, uh, my uh, request to Council is to have the City Manager's Office look into the possibility of the camera request and also the possibility of what can be done about uh, alleviating the problem with the tree damage and the problem with the graffiti. Thank you, sir. Um, the graffiti has all been cleared. 
it's gone. The neighborhood services group had a truck out there uh, spending the better part of a day cleaning that up. I know that wasn't cheap. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Next, I have Mr. Gene Leffel. And again, I would ask council if they could please try to direct their comments to City Attorney Gaylor wherever possible. Mr. Moreno. <laughs> Gene Leffel, 6530 Brighton Boulevard, Garden City. Garden Terrace Subdivision of Commerce City, established in 1922. I just wanted to mention a couple of things to the council. Uh, I uh, enjoyed the candidate interview on June 6th. Very interesting. Some interesting questions. Quite a few people turned out. Um, Tuesday on June 7th, there was an open house at the high school for the 24-inch uh, natural gas pipeline that's going to cut our city more or less in half if they follow the route they've originally planned. Uh, about 24 people were there. Half of them were for public service. And about half were from the council, and there was a half a dozen citizens. I thought there'd really be more citizens to uh, be concerned with the matter of this. It's uh, going to affect nearly every ward in the city and somewhat cut the city in half. Uh, I visited the outreach picnic. I haven't been uh, up at that picnic site in a while. It was very enjoyable, and I, I appreciate that. I also appreciate the way it's been restructured with the little pods for the people giving out their literature. Uh, that way the folks in the hot dog line are not held up uh, with bags full of paperwork. So I, I thought that was a very nice improvement. Uh, on Friday, June 10th, I visited our city clerk and filed my candidate affidavit papers. I am now a officially filed candidate for the city council at large position. I hope everybody appreciates that. This will be my third try on that particular uh, venue. Well, one other thing I wanted to mention is on my way home from uh, the outreach, apparently the folks that have been watching the burned out light bulbs up along Highway 2 have been getting a little behind. I did mention this to Greg Kent-Lemons last week, and he said he'd look into it, but I counted 17 burned out light bulbs between 104th and 72nd Avenue. Um, perhaps some of them just hadn't come on yet. Uh, on June 13th, I visited our Adams County commissioners up at uh, their planning and development meeting. I found this very interesting. There's uh, some folks doing some redevelopment over on uh, Brighton Road around the 8600 block. Uh, my son, as a matter of fact, used to live just right from there. Um, apparently they won't be putting a sidewalk in front of their facility. I was quite surprised at the comment letter, not only from the city and, and the number of uh, folks that were asked to comment that didn't even bother to comment. But I think what's probably more important about the work going on up on Brighton Boulevard, and I think very few are aware, although this was discussed in the last Cars Club meeting last month, one of the potential tenants of that facility would like to process uh, your infectious hazardous medical waste at that site. And I think that would be a, a matter of some interest in our city that's uh, well within the growth boundary, and we do have a flagpole annexation that runs right in front of his property um, I know the last couple of these uh, medical waste facilities didn't do too well here. Uh, there was one proposed years ago on 60th Avenue, and it never got very far. And there was another one up and running um, west of the flea market. City Attorney Gaylor. Well, I think the comments were well taken, and they they're okay. made a matter of information for the council. Okay. Thank you, sir. I also just wanted to thank uh, Paulo Diaz for being the lucky candidate that uh, beat all the rest of us out. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. There are no more citizen communications, so we'll move on to the agenda. A request has been made to continue Resolution 2011-27 for Oneida Cold Storage to the City Council meeting of June 27th, 2011. I would entertain a motion at this time. Councilwoman Teeter? I am lost. I, I'm, I'm at approval of the minutes. Um, we haven't gotten there yet. We need, we have a, had a request. Oh, so moved. I'm sorry. The request for the continuance right. is on the, on the table here. Yes. Councilman McEldowney? Second. 
It's been moved and seconded to approve, I'm sorry, to continue resolution 2007-27. Is there any discussion by council? Councilman Moreno, did you have anything or were you just for the motion? Okay, thank you, sir. All righty then. May I have a voice vote, please? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Do you have something? Yeah. Okay. Since I was not present for the March 28th meeting, mm -hmm. um, and I have not heard the transcript or anything, I don't know if it's appropriate for me to vote on that. It's okay for him to abstain, City Attorney Gaylor? Okay, yes. just making okay. sure. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. Okay, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Thank you. And was one, this, what was this vote on? This was for continuance of resolution 2011-27 for Oneida Cold Storage. I'm sorry, what's the reason for the, for the abstention on that? Because... I'm not sure. Paul? I thought we already voted on that once. Well, there's a little, we're, we're asking tonight for a continuance because it was on with the other resolutions this evening, but staff would like Can to have we, it taken off. He, he's just on the continuance issue. Mr. Gator, could, could you verbalize exactly what we're supposed to be doing here? Okay, we're voting. The motion is to continue resolution 2011-27 has been seconded. And now you have on the floor the court request for a continuance. Councilman Diaz asked for an abstention on that, but you would not need to abstain on that. Right. Sorry, yeah, I was looking at the, um, the, the agenda minutes. that I have, and that was the minutes regarding March okay. and okay. April. So. This is the revolution approving incentive agreement, right? The, the, resolu it, the motion is for a continuance of that, of that item. A motion to continue that item, not to consider it, but to continue the item. Councilman Benson, it was per staff request. Whose request? It was per staff's request. All right. As they're Mind working with the. Do we have yeah. a particular time that we're going to continue it yeah. to, or is it just continue? June 27th. Indefinitely. It's no. June 27th. June 27th. Next, next yes. Monday. It's 6.30 p.m. So that's the motion, to continue this until next Monday, that June 27th. That is correct. That is correct, right. sir. Are you fine with that, Councilman Benson? Well, let's take a vote. Uh, we're, I'm trying. <laughs> okay. okay, one more time. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. So all those opposed? Okay. Motion passes to continue Resolution 2011-27 for next Monday at 6.30. Okay, now there are two sets of minutes before Council this evening for approval. The first set are the minutes for the meeting of April 4th, 2011. Before voting on the minutes of April 4th, I do need a motion to allow Councilwoman Carson to abstain from voting because of her excused absence and Councilman Diaz because he was not a seated member of council until the meeting of June 13, 2011. I will now entertain a motion. Councilman McEldowney. So moved. Thank you, sir. May I have a second? second. Councilman Benson. Thank you, sir. It's okay, hold on. It's been moved and seconded. Now we'll have discussion. Councilman Benson. I want to thank uh, Mrs. Bauer for providing us with a transcript of that meeting. Uh, those minutes, every word, word for word, um, are on excuse. the city website. And I would encourage um, all of our citizens to look, to look on the website and read what happened at that meeting on April the 4th, word for word. I hope that this whole issue is behind us at this point in time. But thank you again, Ms. Power for taking the trouble to type all those, to type it out word for word. Thank you. A point of order, City Attorney Gaylor. Are we not just voting at this time to allow the abstention? We're not actually approving the minutes of April 4th just yet, so that actually Councilman Benson's comments should be directed towards that part of it and not this part. Is that correct? That's what I thought. Okay. Does everyone understand where we're at? Okay. All right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. All those opposed? Okay. I will now entertain a motion to approve the minutes of April 4th, 2011. Councilwoman Teeter? Yes. Move approval of the regular meeting minutes for April 4th, 2011. Thank you. Councilman Benson? I'll second that. And uh, I would also just add what I said before. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. 
Second set of minutes before the council this evening are the minutes of the April 11, 2011 meeting. Before voting on the minutes of April 11th, I need a motion to allow Councilman Diaz to abstain from voting because he was not a seated member of council until the meeting of June 13th. I will now entertain a motion. Councilman McEldowney. So moved. Thank you, sir. Councilman Moreno. Second the motion. Thank you, sir. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by, by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Thank you. The minutes of April 11th have passed. No, no. We just did move for him to. Oh, the abstention. I'm sorry. Yes, and we have just Councilman Diaz on the abstention. So thank you very much. So now I need a motion. Councilman McEldowney. Move to approve the meeting minutes thank for you. April 11, 2011. Councilman Moreno. Second the motion. Thank you. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, this time the motion carries. Thank you very much. Councilwoman Teeter, did you have something to add? Okay. All right. There is one item on the consent agenda this evening. Council is reminded that this item can be removed from the consent agenda for discussion at the request of a council member. Does anyone wish to remove the consent agenda item? I am open for a motion to approve the consent agenda. Councilwoman Teeter? Yes, move to, uh, move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Thank you, ma'am. Councilman Moreno? Second the motion. Thank you, sir. It's been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda. Will the city attorney please read the title? Title reads, An Ordinance Amending the 2011 Budget of the City of Commerce City, Colorado by the recognition of the Adams County Open Space Grant in the amount of $312,000 to be used for a new irrigation system and maintenance building at Fairfax Park and the authorization of the expenditure thereof. Thank you, sir. May I have a roll call vote, please? The motion carries with seven yeses, zero noes. Thank you. There's one, there's one item set for public hearing this evening. It's an application for a justice assistance grant proposed by the police department. Will city manager Jerry Flannery please call upon the staff to describe this application? Thank you, Madam Mayor Pro Tem and members of the council. I'd like to ask Chief Baca to come to the microphone and present. Good hey, evening, sir. Excuse me, before Chief Baca starts, I think we need to open the public hearing. So I, I believe, Mayor Pro Tem, you need to is that correct, Bob? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you'll need to um, officially open the public hearing. Okay, then I officially open the public hearing. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Pro Tem and members of City Council. As Mayor Pro Tem so stated, this is a public hearing to solicit comment uh, regarding the Bureau of Justice Assistance Grant, also known as the JAG program. Uh, in early June this year, we were notified that we were awarded $19,236 uh, the past several years, we've been awarded a very similar amount. There are seven specific areas for which this grant may be used. Uh, you probably have those in front of you, but just briefly, it can be used for various law enforcement programs, prosecution court programs, crime prevention, education programs, community corrections, drug treatment, other planning evaluation technology programs, and crime and vic victim witness programs. Our proposal is to focus on the law enforcement programs. Uh, many of the other areas are already uh, funded, and so uh, we have uh, several uh, items. One of those items uh, we had a citizen talk about, and it was uh, for some cameras. Uh, cameras can be quite expensive. Uh, one, certainly they can be used to identify certain criminal activity. Uh, the good, high-quality resolution camera, cameras typically cost between four and $5,000. Uh, there's always an issue with cameras in terms of connectivity, who's going to pay for the power, where they're going to be placed. Uh, and so they're not a panacea for, you know, resolving crimes and preventing crimes, but they, they can be of, assi of assistance. Uh, certainly that's on our list. We have a number of other things uh, for property and evidence. We are looking to uh, uh, institute a new software program to more easily track all those items that come into our possession each and every day. And uh, it also allows us to get rid of these items that we don't need to store permanently. But uh, that actually uh, was a conversation I had previously with the city manager and this new software that we may propose, we may use these funds, will probably save us uh, from employing another full-time position. Uh, that's how effective it can be. 
Uh, there's other electronic equipment that we could uh, certainly purchase. There's a VHS DVD duplication unit that's uh, very interesting that could help our uh, CSI uh, technicians. We also are looking at some uh, internal affairs professional software that will help us uh, track and evaluate uh, those citizen complaints that come in. It will also in the future help us uh, with accreditation as we seek uh, national accreditation. Uh, and there are a number of other items. So there are certainly a whole litany and list of items I could go on and on, but I don't want to bore you tonight and take up all of your time. Uh, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer any that, any that you may have. Thank you. Councilwoman Teeter? Yes, thank you, Chief, for the presentation. Seems like uh, many of these uh, are very badly needed. I have a question about um, the surveillance camera. Mm -hmm. Are they portable? Like, could you leave them at one place for six months and maybe move it to another place? Where yes, yes, okay. they are. They're very portable. Okay, that's they're good news. Easily connected and disconnected. So, thank you, sir. Sure, Councilman Benson. How are you doing, Chief? Good, sir. How are you tonight? Okay. Um, are these going to be movie cameras, still cameras, what? Well, it, it's a video camera. It can mm -hmm. take still shots and it can provide video, very high resolution. And the video will be recorded off the site? Yes. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how much does a fake camera cost? Well, you can get a good fake camera through, for three or four hundred dollars. <laughs> No, but you know what I'm saying. No, I know what you're saying. Put those things up, people think it's a camera, and yes. you kind of move the real one around every now and then, yes. so they don't really know whether there's a camera there or not. That's true. I think that can have a big deterrent effect. Um, what kind of light is required? Uh, it has its own light source. So they're infrared, many of them, so we don't really need a light source. But if it's infrared, are you going to be able to read a license plate or really identify somebody's facial features enough to be able to find them? We can read a license plate. Very seldom can we see anybody's facial features. Uh, just have to understand that, that criminals know that there are cameras around, and they hide their face. They'll wear a mask. They'll wear a hoodie. Very, very seldom can we uh, identify somebody off of a uh, camera yeah. in that fashion. The only people we tend to identify are bank robbers because we have very clear shots <laughs> when they're standing at the counter. That's about the only time uh, those type of cameras are, uh, have any value. Okay. And we catch 80% of bank robbers. Not we here in Commerce City, but the FBI and our joint task force. We're very lucky we haven't had any here. All right. Well, thank you. I think this is a good idea. Thank you. At least I'll wait until the hearing's over before I make up my mind, though. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Councilman Moreno. Chief, uh, I just had a quick question. Uh, the It says here in the the background information that the money is allocated based on a formula using Commerce City crime statistics and population as compared to other cities. Mm -hmm. um, is that formula kind of based on uh, which cities have the highest rate of crime per capita, or could you speak to that a little bit more? Well, typically the, the grant is awarded to the county, and then the cities take as part of that grant. And uh, as far as I know, it, it is based upon criminal activity and the the seriousness, whether it's part one or part two crimes. Part one crimes are very serious felonies. Uh, part two crimes are less serious. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman Carson. Um, I never know which way this is on or off. Anyway, um, at Adams 12, we had used those cameras, and we did exactly what Mr. Benson said. We probably purchased 50 percent cameras and 50% boxes that didn't have a camera in and moved them around and was a very successful program with the students. Do cities tend to find that great success with these cameras such as the school districts do or is it? It, it depends on the type of cameras they're using and the purpose of the cameras. I can tell you there are very different systems. Uh, Denver has a very uh, high quality, very expensive system called the HALO system. Uh, along the entire 16th Street Mall. It was uh, installed for the DNC. Uh, they can see several blocks, very high resolution. Literally, they can read a VIN number off the dashboard of an automobile uh, several blocks away. So it, 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 it can be that sophisticated or it can be, you know, very low sophistication, very low technology. But it depends on what they're used for, and they can be very effective either way. Okay. Thank you. Sure. 
Councilman McEldowney. I'm not going to keep you up there too long. <clears throat> I just wondered if we'd looked into, uh, for the cost, any sort of a, a lease or rental program. I mean, a lot of times with technology such as this, it, it actually is more cost effective to look into a lease model as opposed to an ownership model. I haven't personally, but I have heard of that, and certainly that, that's a great idea. We'll look at that. Just thinking it might give us the ability to put more in place? Absolutely. Concentrate that effort. So. Yeah, we, we did the same with motorcycles for years, and then they stopped that program. So. But it's <laughs> a great you, idea. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Chief. Thank I appreciate you, you coming up. And as you know, I'm a huge supporter of uh, public safety and crime prevention, so I will definitely be all in favor of helping you out as well as we proceed through this public hearing. So thank you. Thank very you much. very much, and thank you for your continued support, all of you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to address council on this item? If so, please come forward. Nobody? Okay, I'll close the public hearing. As I understand it, City Attorney Gaylor, there's no action required at this time? Right. With this kind of grant, the... Uh the grant application is filed administratively without the need of council authorization. When, when the grant is received, then the city receives the funding and there will be an appropriation ordinance for the money at that time. So this evening then what the council needed to do is conduct the public hearing. The, the police department hears the input uh, regarding the application. Then the public hearing is closed and the city council takes no further action. You move on to the next item on the agenda. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Okay, moving on to resolutions. There are seven resolutions that were not included in the consent agenda because they require a separate voice vote. They are all the result of the city council's program for business incentives. Will city manager Flannery please have an explanation made of the resolutions? And before you do that, uh, there was one of those resolutions that was continued till June 27, so there are actually only six Except resolutions six. now before the council this evening. So resolution 2011-27 has been continued. Thank you, Madam Mayor, Pro Tem, and members of council. I'd like to ask Brittany Morris, Economic Development Director for the city, and her staff to come to uh, the microphone and present all of these items. Thank you, sir. Welcome, Ms. Morris. Mayor Pro Tem, Council, Brittany Morris, Director of Economic Development, and I am pleased to present tonight six business incentives for your consideration and vote under our Commerce City Incentive Program. Just a reminder before I call up Michelle Hill that this program does expire September first, so please get your incentive applications into us soon. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn this over to Michelle Hill, who is our official program administrator for the incentive program. And I'm pleased to also announce that she's also our new retention, business retention specialist for the division. So with that, I will call up Michelle to go over each of these six business incentives, five for existing businesses, and one for a new business in the Northern Range. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, Michelle. Ms. Hill. <laughs> Good evening. Mayor Pro Tem, mayors, um, members of council, as Brittany mentioned, we do have six resolutions before you tonight. Five are for existing businesses. One is for a new prospective business. Um, the total of these resolutions um, result in $35,600 estimated total of incentives um, for capital investments of $3,265,000. And also, um, collectively, these will create 28 new jobs. So we're very excited about these tonight. In addition, two of these resolutions are for businesses that are um, practicing green building um, practices, um, and that's something that we've been pushing for with it throughout the city. Um, with your permission, I'll go ahead and go through all of them at once and then entertain individual questions. Thank you. The first is Resolution 2011-26, Approving Incentives for Nesman and Ang Ortho Orthodontics, which is Reunion Orthodontics. They're located at 18335 East 103rd Avenue, Suite 104 and that is in the Reunion Village Office Plaza. Um, they moved into the um, building about a year ago and invested 105000 in capital improvements for um, specialized equipment, office furniture, waiting room furniture, as well as a sign on the outside of the building. The business completed, well, pulled the, the building permit for and largely started 
all of their um, tenant improvements on the inside before the inception of this program. So unfortunately we could not include those in this incentive, but everything that came after June 1st of 2010 has been included. Um, I should point out as well that there was a corrected resolution left on your place tonight. The one in the packet had two minor changes, and that was first of all the total estimated amount of the incentive is actually $681 and it was incorrectly stated originally as $612. Um, in addition, on the fees, the incentive for the fees, um, that was um, incorrectly stated as the full amount as opposed to the 50% for which they're eligible. So those are the two corrections that are noted on the copy that was left in your place tonight. Um, in addition to their capital investment, the company is creating one new full-time employment position. The second incentive is Resolution 2011-29, approving business incentives for La Casa del Rey. And many of you know La Casa del Rey has been located in the city for many years. It's a Mexican restaurant located at 7035 East 72nd Avenue. And I'm very happy to report that they're expanding within the city. In addition to their existing location on 72nd Avenue, they have acquired the um, property at 7700 Highway 2, which is formerly a gas and convenience store. And they're going to be remodeling that to open an express location. That will only be for walk-up or drive-through service with a more limited menu. Um, in addition, they are leasing the property at 7250 Monaco Street, which is just south of the Derby Resource Center in Derby. And they'll be using that for their um, banquet facilities. So any special events, instead of having those at the restaurant now, they'll be at the, this location. So we're very excited to see them expanding. The total of the capital improvements between those three locations is estimated at $120,000. In addition to staff the new express location, they're creating eight new jobs. The banquet facility will be staffed by existing employees from the restaurant as their plan. Um, so with that, the total of the estimated incentives that will go to La Casa del Rey would be $3,433 for the capital improvements and job creation. In addition, as an existing restaurant in the city, they're eligible for a 5% rebate of the total of their 2010 sales taxes collected to use for marketing the business. And that will be determined by the finance division at a later time. The next resolution, 2011-33, is requesting incentive approval for Aerofield Services. This company recently located um, in the North Forest Office Space Development which council previously approved incentives for um, at 13659 104th Avenue. This incentive request is strictly for the capital improvements of Aerofield Services. They're estimating about $10,500 for their new office equipment and furniture. Um, in addition, they're going to create one full-time equivalent position. The estimated incentive amount is $305, and it's important to point out that as in all of the resolutions, the actual incentives will be limited to what is received by the city. We never go above 100% of what is actually received on the fees and taxes. The company is an aviation um, and consulting firm that they provide asset management of commercial aircraft. So that's new for a lot of you. Um, the next resolution is resolution 2011-34, requesting approval for business incentives for Hertz Equipment Rental Corporation. This company has actually been located this, in this area for a long time. Their address is 7750 East 96th Street. Um, this company, I'm very happy to announce, is one of our green building practice incentive companies. They've invested over $330,000 to reinforce their existing building and install a solar system that will generate 85.85 um, .85 kilowatts at peak capacity and that is sufficient to cover all of their operational needs at that location. So they were very proud of the fact that they're um, going to be able to cover their own needs as well as just make a positive contribution into the community. In addition to that large capital investment, they are creating one full-time job. Um, because of the green building practices, in addition to the normal existing business incentives of a 10% rebate of the sales and use tax um, related to the capital improvements as well as a 50% rebate of the city fees, building fees related to those capital improvements, they receive additional incentives of those for the green building practices. 
and that's an additional 15% rebate of the sales and use tax associated with a capital improvement, as well as an additional 10% rebate on the fee building fees associated with that. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't remember, but they are creating one um, job as well. The total estimated incentives for that company will be $2,945. The next incentive is Resolution 2011-35, requesting approval for incentives for PowerShift Incorporated. This company has been part of the city for a long time. They're located at 8910 East 89th Avenue, and they rebuild heavy equipment transmissions. They're estimating a total of $133,000 in capital improvements to remodel their offices, um, put in another restroom for their staff, and completely redo their parking lot. They're going to tear out all of the existing asphalt and put in a reinforced concrete parking lot surface. In addition to that, with their expansion, they're going to create four new full-time equivalent positions. The estimated incentives for this business total $3,252. And finally, I'm excited to present to you a request for a prospective business, um, Come and Go LLC, who operates in Colorado as come and go food stores. Um, it's important to emphasize this is a prospective business. They are looking at a location in the Turnberry development, which is the northeast um, corner of 104th and Highway 2. Their address would be 12241 East 104th Avenue. Um, they are currently under contract doing their due diligence, but if they do decide to move forward, we expect that they would close within the next couple of months. For those of you who are not very familiar with Come and Go, um, it's a smaller company. They do operate more than 430 stores in 11 states, and those are mostly the north central United States and the Midwest. There's currently 10 operations in Colorado. Two of those are in Brighton, so you may have seen those there. Um, the company, on a company-wide basis, estimates that they serve more than 400,000 customers per day and exceed more than $2 billion in annual sales. 10% of their profits are shared with charitable and educational causes each year in the communities that they serve. And they are the fifth largest privately held company operated convenience store chain in the United States. Um, if they do move forward with this project, the capital investment would total $2,564,186 as an estimated amount. More than 1.5 million of that would be for construction of the new facility and development of the site. They do plan to build a silver LEED certified building, um, and one million would be for the store equipment. They would also create 13 full-time equivalent positions. Um, like the Hertz Rental Corporation, they receive an additional incentive for the green building practices above and beyond the capital um, improvement, sales and use tax rebate, and the fee rebate. So the estimated total of incentives for this company would be $22,275. And again, this is prospective, so if they choose to move forward, we'll be happy to welcome them into the community um, with these incentives. I'd like to open it to any questions you might have at this time. Thank you. Councilman Moreno. Well, I've been wondering why the uh, La Casa del Rey van is parked at Highway 2. Now I get it. Um, I actually had a, a question about um, What's the, the turnaround time in which they receive that rebate back from the city? It's staggered in a long period. The in terms of the incentive agreement and application make it clear that a audit will be conducted of both the building, if that applies, um, the fees involved, and then when there's building um, involved, a lot of times it is the contractor, the general contractor and the vendors or subcontractors for the construction that are part of the audits. So that can take an extended period of time. It's also my understanding from the finance division that the city has up to a three-year period or window to, um, to audit businesses. So it is not something that they get right away. Um, the other piece of it, though, for the job creation is that they have to create the job within 12 months after city council approval. They can receive the first half of, half of the job creation incentive after an audit of their employment base after that first year, and then the second half is after the second year with a second audit. And that audit is accomplished by requesting um, their payroll so we can see the number of employees that they had. Great. And, um, I, I mean, obviously you have a lot more interaction with these businesses than, than we do. We kind of just 
approve them, but um, do you find that most of these businesses um, actually make these capital improvements because of the incentive program that we're offering, or is it just kind of an added bonus um, for them? I would say that it's mixed. Okay. Um, I think some have, this has prompted them to move forward with plans sooner rather than later, and others have maybe done more than they might have because they know that they'll have the incentives. Great. Well, I, I, uh, I just commend your work on this, and you know, it's always exciting to see new jobs moving into Commerce City, so it's great. Thank you. Madam Mayor Pertem. Uh-huh. Uh, really quickly, um, one of the things um, in the agreement, an audit is conducted within the first year or at, at, at year one. Um, but um, the rebates typically do take longer because because the, the revenue needs to come in and then an audit is made and then the rebates are issued. Uh, for example, when we uh, put together the King Supers agreement, that's over a, a certain number of years of time. Um, some of the other items are a little bit easier when it comes to a permit fee or something like that. It's a little bit upfront. Uh, you pay for a permit and there's a certain refund based on that uh, per the agreement. Okay. Thank you, sir. Councilman Benson? Yeah, thanks for that uh, presentation, Michelle. Uh, how firm is the come and go commitment? They're in their due diligence period, so which means they're taking a look at the property. Um, I can't say how firm it is. I don't really know. They are in their due diligence, um, so they'll make an assessment of the property and if they'd like to move forward. They have... Um, they have executed a contract for the lease of that space? They have executed um, the equivalent of a letter of intent. Letter of intent. Yeah, they have, um, they have signed a letter of intent for the piece of property. The due diligence we expect to commence this summer and making a decision by the end of the summer. This will add the, to their decision. By the end of the decision. summer, their due diligence period is over? A lot okay. has commenced, yes. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for your efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else on council have any questions? Thank you, Ms. Hill. I wanted to see if there was anyone in the audience who wished to come and address council on any of these resolutions. Seeing no one, thank you, Ms. Morris and Ms. Hill, for your presentations. Okay. So we're going to start going through all of these one at a time. The first resolution is 2011-26, a resolution approving business incentive for Nestman and Ing Orthodontics, LLC, doing business as Reunion Orthodontics. I will entertain a motion at this time. Councilman McEldowney. Move to approve resolution 2011-26. Thank you, sir. Councilman Moreno. Second the motion. It has been moved and seconded to approve resolution 2011-26. Will the city attorney please read the title? Okay. Before I read the title, I just want to reiterate that uh, the corrected numbers are in the resolution that have has been handed out to council then this evening. So that's the resolution you're approving. Thank Title you, reads, sir. Resolution Approving Business Incentive for Nesman and ENG Orthodontics LC, LLC DBA Reunion Orthodontics. Thank you, sir. May I have a voice vote, please? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Thank you. Resolution 2011-26 passes. Resolution 2011-27 has been continued, so we will move on to 2011-29, a resolution approving business incentive for La Casa del Rey Incorporated. I will now entertain a motion. Councilwoman Teeter. Yes. Move to approve resolution 2011-29. Thank you. Councilman Moreno. Second the motion. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded to approve Resolution 2011-29. Will the City Attorney please read the title? Title reads, Resolution Approving Business Incentive for La Casa Del Rey, Inc. Thank you. May I have a voice vote, please? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Thank you. Resolution 2011-29 is approved. Next is Resolution 2011-33, a resolution approving business incentive for Aerofield Services, LLC. I will now entertain a motion at this time. Councilman McEldowney. Move to approve resolution 2011-33. Thank you, sir. Councilman Moreno. Second the motion. Thank you. Will the city attorney please, um, it's been moved and seconded to approve resolution 2011-33. Will the city attorney please read the title? Title reads, Resolution Approving Business Incentive for Aerofield Services, LLC. 
Thank you. May I have a voice vote, please? All those in favor, signify by, by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Thank you. Resolution 2011-33 is approved. Next is Resolution 2011-34, a resolution approving business incentive for Hertz Equipment Rental Corporation. I will now entertain a resolution at this time. Councilman McEldowney. Move to approve Resolution 2011-35. Thank you, sir. Oh, Councilman sorry, Moreno. Uh, second sorry. the motion as corrected. Thank you. It has been moved and seconded to approve 2011-34. Will the city attorney please read the title? Title reads, Resolution Approving Business Incentive for Hertz Equipment Rental Corporation. Thank you. May I have a voice vote, please? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Resolution 2011-34 passes. Next is Resolution 2011-35. A resolution approving business incentive for Power Shift Incorporated. I will now entertain a motion at this time. Councilman Diaz. Move to approve resolution 2011-35. Very nice. Thank you. <laughs> Councilman <laughs> McEldowney. Second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution 2011-35. Will the city attorney please read the title? Title reads, Resolution Approving Business Incentive for Power Shift, Inc. Thank you. May I have a voice vote, please? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? 2011-35 passes. Next is Resolution 2011-33, a resolution approving business incentive for Come and Go LC, DBA, Come and Go Food Stores, LLC. I will now entertain a motion at this time. Councilwoman Teeter. Yes, move to approve Resolution 2011-36. Thank you. Councilman Moreno. Second the motion. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded to approve Resolution 2011-36. Will the city attorney please read the title? Title reads, Resolution Approving Business Incentive for Come and Go LC, DBA, Come and Go Food Stores, LLC. Thank you, sir. May I have a voice vote, please? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Resolution 2011-36 passes. Thank you, everyone. We'll move on to our ordinances on first reading. There is one ordinance on first reading on the agenda tonight, and it is Ordinance 1863, an ordinance repealing Ordinance 1872, which amended the 2009 budget of the City of Commerce City by recognition of the Adams County Community Development Block Grant. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to address the Council on this ordinance? Seeing none, I will now entertain a motion to introduce 1863 as Council by seated and approved for the ordinance on first reading. Councilman McEldowney. Move to uh, introduce Ordinance 1863 on first reading. Thank you, sir. I need a second, please. Councilman Moreno. <laughs> I'll second. I actually have discussion as well. Okay. It has been moved and seconded to approve Ordinance 1863. Councilman Moreno has some discussion. I just had a question for staff about uh, this particular ordinance, um, you know, I, I read and, and it looked like we needed to expend these funds before they expire, which I understand. Um, but the programs in which they were originally designated for um, the low uh, moderate income homeowners and seniors in the community uh, transportation program for them, as well as the dead tree and limb removal, um, you know, I understand that we received those funds, but. Uh, can, can someone give me a brief history on on why Adams County decided not to fund these programs? Good evening, Leanne. Good evening again. Um, Adams County went through an audit uh, done by the federal government, and what they had found was that both of those programs no longer qualified under the CDBG, which is the Community Development Block Grant, um, guidelines and so originally they had gone ahead and didn't think there was a problem so all the agreements were signed and we were going to move forward on that when they realized that they really did need to stop and cancel those contracts so those dollars we banked them so that we could come up with a really good project that we could go ahead and move forward with and using those dollars and so um, we have to use them by the end of this year and we have three years to use that, so that will end. And so they decided to go ahead and use that to assist in getting some of the irrigation done in the Derby area. And that's part of that rehabilitation that they're working on. 
And Leanne, that that uh, that use does qualify under CDBG. Absolutely. Great. Um, could you uh, tell me a little bit more about irrigation and landscape improvements in Derby Resource Area? Is that um, mostly going to be devoted to um, improvements in the, the the plaza, the vegetation around that area, or in other areas as well? No, it's going to be around that um, area in that intersection where they did the new, you know, all the new bricks and everything, and then they put in that new irrigation. So they're going to run systems in there so it automatically waters it and then they don't have to spend staff time doing all of that. Great. Um, they'll be putting in some kind of um, plants that are, you know, low water usage, that type of stuff. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Does anyone else have any questions? No? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Since it's been moved and seconded, will the city attorney please read the title? title of the ordinance reads, an ordinance repealing Ordinance 1782, which amended the 2009 budget of the City of Commerce City by recognition of Adams County Community Development Block Grant CDBG funding in the amount of $60,000 for the Dead Tree Limb Removal Program and the Senior Transportation Program for low moderate income homeowners and seniors in the community and authorize expenditure of the said CD. BG funds for those programs. And in lieu thereof, the said CDBG funds are hereby appropriated in the 2011 budget of the City of Commerce City to be used for irrigation and landscape improvements in the Derby Resource Center area. Thank you, sir. Mr. Benson, did you have a question? Yes, would it be appropriate to ask if there's anyone in the audience who had anything to add on this ordinance, 1863? I think we already asked that, did we not? Recall. I don't think we did after. Uh, but we can reiterate the, the, the request. Okay, right. You opened with that. I thought I opened with that. Thank you, Councilman McEldowney. Yes, I'd already asked that question, Councilman Benson. Thank you. Okay, may I have a roll call vote, please? Thank you. Ordinance 1863 passes with seven yeses. Councilman McEldowney, did you have a question or? For the next agenda item. Okay. Administrative council business. Okay. We're moving on to administrative council business. Councilman McEldowney. Thank you, Ms. Mayor, for Tim. I have a couple of items, uh, first of which uh, regards our participation in the North Area Transportation Management Organization, or NADA. Uh, not sure how many folks are familiar with that. We don't speak of it all that frequently, but this is a body that was formed, I want to say, about three years ago now, um, out of essentially a consortium of uh, member uh, municipalities here in the northern part of the metro area, uh, primarily made up of Adams County, uh, and our neighboring sister cities in Adams County, um, all of whom have felt the impact of the slowdown of transportation, uh, our transit progress, primarily on the Fast Tracks initiative, but also um, concerns about the overall funding uh, attention for the North area, including the I-25 corridor that moves through uh, Adams County. Recently, uh, the, the NADA organization, um, and I'll, I'll read this so that I don't miss a, a, a piece, um, but in essence, this is a letter that we are seeking to submit to Dr. Cog uh, in support of actions being taken by one of our uh, sister municipalities within the NADA organization. The City of Commerce City is a member of the North Area Transportation Alliance and is working with other members of the Alliance to make transportation and mobility improvements for the citizens and businesses in the North Metro Area. During the application phase of the 2012-2017 Transportation Improvement Program, the NADA board endorsed the City of Thornton's submittal of an application for funding of a transportation management organization. I'll just pause for a second and say that a TMO or a transportation management organization is again another body that is formed to help guide and influence how transportation dollars are spent. Um, that organization does not exist in the North area, but there are similar uh, bodies that exist elsewhere in the metro area. The application did not fare well in the review process at the Denver Regional Council of Government and was not funded. The reason that we support the City of Thornton's request on behalf of the NADA 
was that the north and northeast side of Denver metro areas needs, um, sorry, the northeast side of the, of the Denver metro area needs a group that supports multimodal transportation with an eye on reducing the single occupancy vehicles that drive many of our congested highways in our area. We need a group that helps us provide information to the public and our businesses on ways to improve transportation by use of RTD, bus and rail, ride arrangers for carpooling, use of bicycles and walking. The NADA group is committed on starting a transportation management association as part of our group's efforts. We understand that Dr. Cog has potential funding in the transportation demand management pool that could be used to assist us in our outreach efforts. We understand that there will be a request for applications for possible funding through the TDM pool for the 2011-2012 funding cycle. This letter is to state our support and commitment for the application being submitted to Dr. Cog for funding from the TDM pool for and by the North Area Transportation Alliance and its members. Essentially, this will be submitted by Commerce City to Dr. Cog seeking support for the Dr. Cog board's approval of uh, those funds to help uh, kickstart the formation of that transportation management organization for uh, this northern area. So I would ask for council's support uh, for this, this letter uh, and we'll have the mayor pro tem sign this tonight so that it can get moved uh, by staff over to, uh, to Dr. Cog for consideration. Any questions on that? Does anyone on council have any questions or issues with moving forward on that? No? Okay, thank you. Let's, let's have a motion then if you wish. Would move uh, support uh, move the council support the uh, signing of this letter. Thank you, uh, Councilwoman Teeter. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded to move forward with that. Everyone in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay, Councilman McEldowney, feel free to move that forward, and I'll sign it this evening. Did you have any other business? I did. Thank you. Okay. Um, I am. Uh, Proud to say that I was the, uh, the first person to second a motion raised by our newest council member, Mr. Diaz. And on that note, uh, I, I want to uh, suggest that we as a council consider uh, formalizing the policy and the practice around how we intake uh, or, or fill a vacancy, I should say, for council. Um, having been uh, an appointee myself uh, almost four years ago, uh, and now having sat as a council member during an appointment process, um, I can see great differences in how the two processes were structured. And I think uh, more than anything, I saw a great impact on staff um, as a result of the, uh, the announcement of Mr. Johnson's um, departure. Staff was thrown into an absolute tizzy at a very inopportune time given the things that were going on. Um, we don't have a process on paper other than the very loose framework of our charter. And I would like to, in the midst of this, just say thank you to Ms. Bauer for her effort in coordinating so much of what transpired to uh, help uh, us get to this point. Um, and thank Council for the work that you did while Ms. Uh, Snyder and I were at ICSC. But that said, I, I feel like for the benefit of, of a potential applicant to a vacancy and for Council and for staff alike, I think it would be good if we took pause sooner than later while this effort is still fresh in our mind and reflect on what a policy could or should look like um, would suggest that that effort uh, include querying our sister governments how they process this. I know the 27J school district has two vacancies that they're in the midst of fulfilling now um, and see what we can borrow from those processes and assemble a, a policy. I think um, Mr. Gaylor, if I'm not mistaken that while we, we don't necessarily want to go down the road of modifying the charter to accomplish this, I think we can formalize a policy that which, which we could then adopt by the council that could ultimately be modified over time, but would at least have a, an agreed to framework by which we could pursue these in the future. So with that, I would uh, be open to questions or otherwise. Does anyone have any questions on that? No? To, Council Moreno? Yeah. Okay. Just on that note, I, I did have a discussion with Councilman McElderney about this. I think it would be something really good to look into. You know, I, I don't know for the public's sake, um, just how much lack of structure there is when a resignation occurs and appointment needs to happen. Um, technically, under our, our charter and under our rules, we didn't even have to have interviews. We could have just appointed someone. Um, I am very uncomfortable with that. Um, lack of structure in that process. Um, so I do think council should look at a policy 
uh, and particularly draw upon the experiences of, of Ms. Bauer, considering that she's been th- through a few now and kind of knows the historical practices that we've gone through in terms of actually setting a set policy where we, we do at least say that every candidate that submits a letter will get an interview um, and, and have that on the books so we make sure that occurs. Um, you know, council, and to our credit, has historically done it that way, and um, I, I just would feel more comfortable with a, a council policy on that front. I agree. So does anyone else have anything to add to that? Councilman Benson? Well, I, I agree with what's been said, but I would certainly like to see the questions that we're going to ask decided at some point in time prior to the beginning of the interview process so that we don't spend the first hour trying to formulate those questions. I hope we can do that. I, I think that observation is, is a key driver. We, we shouldn't find ourselves sort of foundering at the beginning of a meeting in that way. So um, with that said, I would, rather than propose a specific process now, would propose that we, um, for lack of a better suggestion, uh, leverage three or so members of council, uh, potentially a couple members um, of the recent application class, if you will, uh, and a- ask that that subgroup put together research and, and pro- propose, I should say, propose a couple options for what that policy might look like. Um, I think it would be helpful to have someone who has recently gone through the process, as well as folks who sit on the council who have perspective of what the role is like, um, sort of put their heads together and what that uh, that process might look like. So, Mr. Moreno. Just want to say, it sounds like you might be volunteering Councilman Diaz for his first project. <laughs> <laughs> he could wear two, uh, two hats in that committee. Okay, anyone else have a comment? Okay, Councilman Diaz. Yes, and as a newbie who just recently went through that process, um, I think I can attest, and I'm sure Gene can kind of say the same thing, of um, it was a pretty uneasy feeling, um, pretty much sitting there as council tried to decide, wait, are we going to ask these questions or are we just going to have them approach the bench? Are we going to ask them to just say why they want to be on council or should we send them to the back? And I think that was a lot of our discussion back there was, wait, what is the process? Are they going to pick the top three and then we're going to show up next Monday or is everybody just going to come back on Monday? So um, I would definitely, um, A, support that, but at the same time, um, I'd volunteer myself just based on the fact that um, I do have the recent experience in terms of having to sit on that side and trying to figure out what the process is and, and um, the weird feeling that ensues. Okay, thank you. City Attorney Gaylor, did you have anything to add? Uh, in order that there can be a, a record made of the Council's action, I think we should have a, a motion to uh, uh, refer to staff in conjunction with the committee that has been suggested by Councilman McEldowney to uh, bring back a draft of a council policy in regards to this matter. Would uh, would you be okay with us eliciting support or uh, volunteers from council before we make that motion that we can make a motion that acknowledges the that, volunteers? That's a good approach. Would anyone else on council be open to participation in that? Actually, would you mind if we uh, hold off on that until um, the mayor and councilman both oh, get true. back in case they might? Yeah, that's a very good um, idea. Why don't we do this? Yeah. Um, we will sit on this for the moment. Okay. I will bring this back up in our next meeting through administrative business, and at that point we can reintroduce it to Mr. Natal and Mr. Bullock, and then we'll make a motion to enact this. In the meantime, if anyone out there who recently went through the process has interest, contact your newest council member, Diaz, and let him know your interest. <laughs> Councilman McEldowney, I would suggest since uh, the mayor will not be back for a couple of weeks, that maybe we postpone that out for two weeks, if that's okay I'm with you. I'm absolutely fine with that, just great. as long as we get it on the Is everyone in agreement with calendar. that? J.D.? Okay, great. And that's, that's what we'll do then. Thank you, City Attorney. I do have one more item that I think we sort of straddles the administrative business and okay. uh, updates. Go um, ahead. For those of you that attended the uh, the joint uh, uh, meet and greet with the Brighton City Council a few weeks back, uh, one of the items of discussion that evening was the district, uh, the school district in the north of our, our community, 27J, which covers uh, a significant area within uh, Adams County. Um, I believe the estimates show it to be the largest school district in the metro area at its at its peak. Um, it's got a lot of growing to do, and it's um, done an, ama- an amazing job. 
uh, to this point with what amounts to the worst funding in the state per student. Uh, the challenge is that, as most of us know, the cost of doing things gets a little bit more expensive every year. Um, the number of students going to school in that district go up every year. The dollars to do what they need to do go down every year. Um, that's been compounded with the economy. It's been compounded with uh, the state education funding. Uh, I believe a few weeks ago I uh, rattled off a few numbers. I think I've got them handy. I don't want to misquote them. Uh, give me just one second. The, uh, these are notes that were uh, conveyed in the, at the State of the District recently by the district. Uh, in 2010, the district lost $2.2 .2 million in funding. 2011, our most recent school year, they lost $8.2 million in funding. And in the school year to come, uh, they are projected to lose another $2.3 million in funding. Uh, during that time, important to note, they've seen an 8% increase in students. So 8% increase in students, $10 million decline in funding, do the math. Uh, not sure if folks are, are aware of how funding for schools works, but the state gives each district a certain amount of money per student that's enrolled in the district at a certain calendar date each year. Um, it's around $6,000, I think, per student in rough terms. Uh, over and above that, districts are able to uh, add to the funding that they have available to them through use of mill levy overrides and bonding. Um, to sort of pull a couple examples off the top of my head, Boulder uh, sort of rules the roost when it comes to per student funding over and above what the state allows, and it's in the neighborhood of, I want to say, twelve or thirteen hundred dollars per student. Jefferson County is a great example. Aurora has recently passed the mill, even in the downtimes last year. Uh, and so we've got other districts that are doing fairly well. Um, by comparison, District 27J gets all of $52 per student over that $6,000 from the state. So we live in a state that is horribly funded for education by comparison to the U.S. We live in a school district that's funded at the bottom of the barrel, and yet this is a district that has shown growth and achievement every single year over the last several years. Um, but there's a limit. And they, I believe, frankly, that they've hit that limit. Uh, unfortunately, this district has never managed to pass a mill levy override in the last 10 years. The only measure they were able to pass was the bond initiative that was used to fund Prairie View High School, Prairie View Middle School. And in doing so, they had to give up a, a couple of points on their mill to get the voters to buy that. There has been no formal decision made as of yet by the district to put a measure on the ballot this fall. Uh, the board is thoroughly considering that right now. Um, I, uh, in talking to some folks that evening on Brighton, said, hey, you know, one of the things that we need to do is get the other elected officials in the district uh, together, and we need to figure out how to support and show our support for the district if they should choose to go to the voters this fall. Out of that informal discussion, uh, a couple more discussions have ensued, and um, the district is inviting a couple of folks from each of the councils that uh, feed into 27J to get together later this week and talk about how we can form uh, essentially an advisory or a, a technical advisory committee to help uh, lend support and, more importantly, help fundraise and get the word out about uh, the initiative should they choose to put that on the ballot. So I wanted to, um, A, uh, make sure that you had that loop closed for those of you that were at that dinner, that the discussions have essentially gained some traction. Um, and would like to uh, see if there's anyone on council that would like to join at that upcoming meeting uh, and, and would be interested in helping in that effort. Nudge, nudge to Mr. Diaz, who's obviously yes. yes. Go ahead, Councilman awesome. Diaz. My question is, is when's that meeting? Uh, is on, it's been pushed out one week. Okay. I said it was next week. It is for Friday the 29th, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Um, I would definitely Friday the 1st, I apologize. Friday the 1st? Okay. I would definitely be interested in joining that meeting. Um, my wife is an educator, so I see the pinches that um, schools have to go through. Um, in addition, I'm a 27J district parent, I suppose. Um, not quite yet. My daughter starts kindergarten next year, so that, this is definitely an issue that I do want to pursue and assist with as much as I can. So I'm volunteering. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? What uh, date are you talking about? 
Friday the 1st? I, I, and I apologize, it's actually Thursday the 30th. I had the last day of the oh, month okay. instead of the last day of the week. June 30th? Correct. It will be at the uh, School District 27J Educational Service Center at 160th at uh, 130 p.m. I'll forward the note. Thank you, Councilman McEldowney. Did you have anything else? I will relinquish the microphone. Okay, thank you. Councilwoman Teeter. Yes, <clears throat> this request is for you, Ms. Bauer. Eight years before I served on council, there was a Rocky Teeter that served on council. Then there's Kathy Teeter, and there very well be, could be another Teeter. So that's like 25 years of Teeters. So starting this evening in the minutes, if you could start putting my first initial K, just for the documents, if someone wants to pull past records or something, then my name will be attached to these years. <laughs> well, I mean between now and the end of my term. Thank you very much. And there could be another 25 years after that, too. <laughs> okay, Councilman Benson. Yes, you know, we've had a presentation by Excel, trying to put that 24-inch, 750 PSI, 1,000 PSI gas pipeline down the middle of our city. And this is going to go forward. Um, I don't know what the resolution is going to be, but we need to get some legal advice about what we can do. I don't know how much we can do. It's all going to be up to the, P the PSC. PUC, but could we, uh, I would ask that we call an executive session so we can get some legal advice from Mr. Gaylor about what this city can do to prevent this uh, pipeline from splitting my ward in half. Comments from council? Councilman Moreno? Are you just on the board for? Yeah, I, I'm on the board for okay. something else, but I'd be fine with when were we thinking about doing that? City Attorney Gaylor? Are you thinking next meeting? Well, within the next couple of weeks, because I think we're, we're going to be having some kind of a meeting up north. Okay. Um, next meeting is about a four-hour scheduled meeting yeah. now, so maybe the meeting I following? I right. I don't think Two it has weeks? to be the very next meeting, but if we do it the meeting after that. I think that will be, be enough time. Do we have the the um, couple things? Excel is going to be coming in to give you a presentation on uh, what's the specific on the pipeline integrity. The, the pipeline integrity and safety. So they are going to be presenting to you on the 27th, the night of. So that's one item. Two, I think we can come back uh, with an exec session. Um, we're, we don't have a meeting on July 4th, so we're probably looking at the 11th or 18th or something like that. You know, now, I'd just I like to see it uh, come before. Uh, they're going to set up a meeting, or maybe we can set up a meeting um, in Ward 2. Correct. Concerning that issue. So I'd like to have this executive session before that time. I don't know when that meeting is going to occur. Yeah. I, believe I think maybe they we have can make a, it occur at a certain time, but we set up the meeting ourselves instead of waiting on I believe uh, they have set it up. a public meeting scheduled for June 29th. At Ortho Stewart Middle School. At Ortho Stewart, yeah. Where? At Stewart Middle School, right behind Stilettos. When did that happen? There was a communication with that in the past week mm -hmm. on email. I never saw that. It came from public mm -hmm. service directly. Well, then we, I would like to have this executive session sometime before that. The only opportunity would be the 27th then. So we'll put it on there. Is council all in favor of that? We do it on the 27th. Do we have a consensus from council to go forward with that? Do you want to go down the horn or do you want to go around the horn? Yes, comments? please. Um, I, I would be in support of it. Unfortunately, I was, I was unable to make the uh, initial <laughs> meeting at Adam City High School, so I'm looking forward to this upcoming meeting. I would support uh, an internal council meeting to get guidance from, from staff. Okay, so you're a yes, Councilman McEldowney? Council yes, ideas? I agree. Um, executive session, does that happen before the council meeting? Just curious. No, that's actually part, yeah. Part of it. Okay, yeah, so would be part okay, of it. Yeah. Uh -huh. You'll Regardless be part of it. Yes. Great question. Thank you. Councilwoman Teeter? Um, I was wondering, since it's such a heavy agenda that evening, if possibly we could start the meeting a half hour early 
if that would be possible with the rest of council to go into that exec do you think it'll be about 30 minutes We're talking about we don't know yet do we we don't know but i it's up to council if you want to start the meeting earlier or we could put the exec session before the meeting too okay councilwoman carson um, I would recommend to put it before the meeting if we have a four-hour meeting. And we could combine maybe eating yeah. mm -hmm. with an exec session. Mm -hmm. That'll work. So that'll be 6 o'clock for that meeting. Councilman Benson, now you're obviously yes. And Councilman Myrna? Okay. Councilman Benson, go ahead with your question. Are we going to start the city council meeting 30 minutes early? Yes. yes. Uh, Madam Mayor, Portem, members of council, let me go back and take a look at the agenda for that meeting. And there might be some that we can, that aren't as time sensitive or critical That'd that we great. can put to another meeting. Okay. Thank you, sir. Just a quick comment on the timing of the executive session. Excuse me. If we're talking about putting this on the agenda for the night of the 27th, would it be appropriate to do our executive session after we've heard from Excel so that we can That's what I was consider their well. input during the executive session? It probably would make logical sense. And I think that's one of the reasons I would suggest let us take a look at the agenda mm -hmm. and maybe there's some things that we can move around um, there are a couple items I think that are on there that aren't as time sensitive so we would put it on after okay. Okay. and that just needs a consensus not a formal motion okay thank you councilman Moreno new item right mm -hmm. good we're good new item new item yes okay. uh -huh. great um, at last week's uh, meeting um, or, or at the most recent meeting of the Cultural Council uh, Councilmember Diaz uh, had to resign his position as president um, because of his new position on the City Council um, I had spoken with Councilmember Mayor Pro Tem Snyder and asking if um, she would mind if um, Councilmember uh, Diaz took her place on the Cultural Council that way he would still be able to be a member as a city council member um, and uh, obviously that that board could still um, take advantage of his talents um, so uh, if, if it be okay with council I'd like to make a motion that we replace council member Diaz onto the cultural council in the place of mayor pro tem Snyder yes and I I would like to stick at that motion because um, I have served on cultural council a few years before I even ran for city council the first time in 2003 so I've been on there for a long time and um, councilman Diaz is doing a wonderful job so I'm happily second that motion and I wish them all the best so all those in favor signify why well, it's been moved and seconded all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye aye all those opposed it's all yours councilman Diaz councilman Moreno did you have anything else no. okay does anyone else have anything else for administrative business? I don't see anyone else on the board. Okay. For reports, we'll start with you, Councilman Moreno. Well, actually, sorry, if you'll hold for one second. First, we'll start with the city attorney. City Attorney Gaylor. Okay. Uh, when uh, City Council conducted my evaluation uh, around the first of the year, uh, one of the items that we discussed was... Uh, uh, a desire that I submit uh, regular reports to the council as to the activities of the city attorney's office. And I've been doing that uh, every every month, 30-day period. And uh, I'm just wondering what the city council feels now that you have some indication of some of the activities that go on in my office, if you feel that the report that I've been rendering has been useful? Is it something that you desire to continue? Or if you feel that uh, since we've tried it for six months that it's really no longer necessary? Uh, I, I ask you that because I'll certainly continue doing it. But it is uh, a rather time-consuming process because every time anybody in my office uh, conducts an activity, we fill out a time slip just like you do in private uh, legal practice. And then we file that time slip, and then at the end of the month, then we go through the time slips and compute uh, the different activities that my office was involved with during the month. Uh, so it, the question I have is, 
Do you feel you like the report? Do you want the report? If you don't feel it's desirable, I would certainly appreciate knowing that. Thank you. Councilman McEldowney. I actually really like getting it. It's, a, it's helpful to get an insight into what's happening in your office. I guess my concern is the level of effort you're suggesting is involved in putting it together. And so um, if, if that's a manual accounting that has to occur at month end, then that obviously impacts my desire to have you generate it, although the information is quite valuable. So if, if having said that, and if the rest of the council feels that way, if, if you feel it's desirable and helpful, then the time is, from my point of view, is worth the effort. What I was concerned about, am I spending time doing something that you look at and don't re really give much consideration to and, and you don't think it's necessary or worth it? I guess my, my only comment in addition to that that I just made was would be, is there is there no technology employed that helps make this essentially an out, a report that can be output at the end of the month? I mean, it, are these physically documented and then filed and they have to be pulled up and manually tabulated? Well, there are three of us, so each of us will make our own entries, uh, but as you say, they are computerized, so... But still, uh, what I do is I get the reports from my assistants, mm -hmm. and then I have to decipher them. Is this a meeting? Is this preparation of a legal document? Is this uh, uh, some other category? So it still involves going through each of the tabulated items. But it, uh, rest assured, yeah. if you feel it's, it's helpful, I will certainly... I want to continue it. Yeah, it's just just my comment. So I would defer to others and see if there's value there before we you get direction to proceed. I was just wondering, City Attorney Gaylor, do you think that it would be less of a, of a time-consuming effort for you if we can did like maybe every th three months? Maybe did it. I mean, would that help, or would you still really be in the same position where you were still having to gather at the end of the month? Well, maybe changing it, say, to two months, because when it gets too stale, right. <laughs> then it's more effort, that I think, it, to go yeah. back through it. So okay. I think maybe changing it to two months might be uh, okay. helpful from my perspective. Okay. So we're saying not just produce it. We're saying produce it every two months of two months' worth of data? Right, two months' right. worth of data being produced every two okay. months. Maybe we'll just run down the council and see if everybody's okay with that. Does that work? Councilman Moreno? Yes? Councilman McEldowney? I'm sorry, Councilman Benson? Sorry. Oh, I, had, I had my button pushed. Um, Councilman Benson. That's what I was going to ask you, Bob. Is it, is it easier to do it once a month or once every two months or once a quarter? Yeah. Once every two months? Because they are helpful. That's what I would suggest. Okay. I would agree, Councilman Benson, they are helpful. Yeah. That's what I wanted to hear. Yeah, yeah. We don't just throw them away. I promise you that, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Councilwoman Carson, yes? Councilwoman Teeter? Yes. Councilman Diaz? Yes. And Councilman McEldowney, the real Councilman McEldowney. <laughs> and I'm a yes, too. Good. Well, that helps a lot. Thank yes, you. So it's every two months, then, if that helps. And if that doesn't pan out to be um, helpful well, or work for you, just come back and let us know, and I'm sure we'd be willing okay. to Good. Well, it's helpful that, that I know that, that you read it and it's Absolutely. helpful to you. Absolutely. The, the other thing I want to report to the Council is more on a a sad note, uh, I won't be attending uh, CML this year because uh, <clears throat> I have a brother who has terminal cancer in San Diego, and he's been battling this uh, illness for about a year and a half, and things are, are turning from bad to worse, and he's been asking for me. So uh, if you don't see me at CML, it's because on Wednesday morning I am flying to San Diego, and I'll be in San Diego plan on returning Sunday, uh, the following Sunday, so I will be here for the Monday night meeting. So, But that's the only reason I won't be seeing you at CML this year, because I always relish going to those sessions and uh, appreciate uh, seeing you all there and uh, participating, but it won't happen this year. Well, I'm very sorry to hear that, and our uh, thoughts and prayers will be with you. Uh, City Manager Flannery? Thank you, Madam Mayor, Pro Tem, Members, Council. Uh, very quickly, um, we will be emailing you tonight a uh, summary of the report from last week's uh, six-hour retreat. And so um, in anticipation for next week, 
we will be putting an item on for the long-range financial plan and an update uh, to go through that. Um, <clears throat> as directed by the City Council, uh, staff has been meeting with uh, members of the trucking industry to discuss Thank some you. of their issues. <laughs> um, we uh, have informed a number of them of the Council's direction to staff, and uh, they're very happy to hear that we're going back and having stakeholder meetings. And so staff is putting together an outline of stakeholder meetings as uh, over the summer and, and leading up to uh, the time frame that was described by Council. So uh, we'll look forward to that, and we'll let you know when those meetings are. Thank um, you very much. Wanted to give a plug to one of our own, um, certainly one of the departments in, uh, in uh, eliminating the mosquito uh, situation that we all have. I know Councilwoman Teeter brought it up, and uh, uh, gladly we were uh, on top of this issue. Um, and uh, Michelle Halstead and her staff in getting the word out has been extremely successful. Um, we were on 850KOA radio, Channel 7 and Channel 31. Uh, Channel 31 tonight uh, should have a ch on uh, 10 p.m. Uh, story on this issue as well. So um, kudos, very, very uh, positive uh, coverage on, on our program to do that. In conjunction with that, another uh, communications item uh, for uh, our, our um, Michelle Halstead's uh, staff and herself, um, we, they have been working with the Wolf 92.5 FM. Um, I, it's it's going to be hard for me to say these names, Jonathan, Jonathan and Mudflap. <laughs> I, I, I don't I don't listen to that station, but uh, I, I hear they're really good. So, um, but uh, we have coordinated with them that we will simulcast uh, patriotic music for the fireworks show on July 3rd at Dick Sporting Goods. Uh, this year, as you know, the, the game is on the 3rd of July. So, um, if you want to tune to 92.5 while you're at the game, uh, watching the fireworks, you'll hear all the great music and it'll be right in your vehicle um, while you're sitting there listening. So that's that it. That sounds great. Thank you. <clears throat> Deputy City Manager, did you have anything? If nothing, okay. Nothing for the, okay. Now we can start with Council. Councilman Moreno. Just wanted to um, thank Council for uh, your diligent work last week at the planning retreat. I thought it was a... Uh, a very good discussion and uh, some progress was made on that front. Um, also want to thank uh, Council for allowing me to represent you in Washington DC this past week um, in the meeting with White House officials and President Obama. It was a, uh, to be to be short, uh, a once in a lifetime experience and it was really great. Um, I have actually since received two invitations to go back to the White House. Um, so I'm thinking I might have a a uh, professional career as a uh, professional dinner slash party guest, um, but the two the two events and and to to uh, uh, make sure council knows is that it would either um, come from personal funds or my discretionary account. I would not be asking for any additional appropriation from this council. But the two event two upcoming events that I was invited to, you might have seen the coverage at the Colorado Rapids will be honored. Uh, by President Obama at the White House. I did receive an invitation to that. Um, I'm not sure if that my schedule will work, work out with that, um, so I'm not sure if I will be uh, attending. But the other is, in July, a, a briefing specific to municipalities, which I think would be really great. Um, the last briefing that I attended uh, was a briefing for uh, young elected officials at various levels of government. So it was kind of catered to state legislatures, uh, city councils and, and school boards. Uh, so it was a, a diverse range of issues. Uh, this one in July would actually be specific about municipalities and I think Commerce City could make some really great headway in, in letting the administration continue to know the challenges that we face in the city um, and, uh, and getting their support um, for some federal programs. Uh, but I want to make uh, Council aware of those two opportunities. Uh, I will keep you updated on those. Um, and uh, again, thank you for uh, allowing me to represent the city um, uh, with the president and White House officials. It was, uh, it was fantastic. Thank you, sir. 
And just briefly, uh, City Manager Flannery, I too was approached about the White, going to the White House for the Colorado Rapids, and I wanted to bring that back to you to see if you could take a look at that because I really think that, you know, probably the whole council should have been approached about that, being that they are, you know, our, our, our soccer club right here in Commerce City. And so my thoughts were, you know, it appears, and I didn't know until this just now that Councilman Moreno had been invited. I, too, was invited. So it occur occurred to me that maybe you could check that out and see if that invitation could be extended to anyone on council that wanted to go, since we all put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into that. So um, if you would check into that for us, that would be great. Thank you. Thanks for bringing that to our attention, Councilman Moreno, because I was going to bring that up myself. <laughs> Thanks. Is that all you had? Yes. Okay. And congratulations on that, by the way. Councilman Benson. Well, my congratulations also. Uh, I know Councilman Marino and I were talking about this young uh, elected officials organization, and I was wondering if there was a, an older elected <laughs> officials organization, and we figured out that it was the U.S. Senate. So uh, anyway, um, I guess we're going all the way back on our reports to June the 2nd, I believe. That was, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Well, June the 2nd, we did have that meeting at the uh, high school, uh, Adam City High School, with Excel, and they had the maps, and they had several people, and I think that the breakdown of the, um, who was it that gave the breakdown of the, the people who were there? Was that Mr. McEldowney? Sorry. Who, who was that? Oh. That was Mr. Leffel. Yes. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, I think that was just about correct. There were very few citizens there. There were a lot of people from Excel there. Several people from the council were there, but not too many uh, citizens. And uh, I'm hoping that we're going to be able to get uh, the word out on this June 29th meeting. Now, that's only nine days from now. What effort is the city going to make to get notice out to our citizens? It's just a question I'd like to ask. Because we've got to get a notification out to people that this I is think, what's happening. I uh, think the mailers specifically have gone out to each of the residents. Um, maybe, Michelle, can you help at all? The thing is, I have not gotten a mailer. And I, that, that's what's confusing to me. Um, I do check my mail every day. Because mostly it's got money. Hi, Mayor Pro Tem, Hi. members of Council, Michelle Halstead, uh, Communications Director. So Excel has taken the lead primarily on, on their outreach with their mailings and such like that. What we've committed to do is put it into City News, which will be going to the printer and out to the mail um, end of this week. So there's a brief in the City News that includes the next meeting, just like we did last time. And then um, we've also got this meeting on our website. Okay. What was the form of the mailer? Has, I, it been, has it been mailed out yet? Councilman Benson, I'm not sure because that's Excel Energy who's taking the lead on, on their meeting and promoting their, their meeting. That's not a city uh, mailer. I understand that, but what I'm concerned about is whether a mailer is actually going to be sent out and if everybody's going to be getting one sent to them because I have not gotten one. We've been notified by Excel that a mailer is being sent. Do they know when? I do not know that. It, it may be in the email that I received. I'll check. Well, could someone from the staff contact them and uh, let them know that we're nine days away from the meeting and that it would be good if they got out a, a notice explaining what the uh, discussion is going to be about? Councilman McEldowney? Yeah, yeah, just to jump in, we, we all received uh, an email from Preston Gibson, uh, or forwarded, I should say, from Jerry um, over, the, over the weekend, I believe asking uh, or forwarding along the, that heads up, um, giving us heads up about the, uh, the meeting, and Mr. Flannery elicited our input on that meeting. And part of the comments that I know went back were from myself and Mr. Bullock regarding uh, how broad or wide a, an area should be notified. They had suggested some very narrow radius, and there were, we, we, we each levied comments uh, that Jerry has carried back, my understanding was to Mr. Gibson, to help hopefully expand the, the breadth of that notification. Okay. So, Is it going to be at least Ward 2? Uh, well, I think the, the intent was to 
I know you're focused on Ward 2, and I live in that, and so I thank you, but this pipeline covers a whole lot more than Ward 2 in our city. So right. I said the, at least the, Ward 2. That, that's what I'm concerned about is The Ward meeting two. is in Ward 2. Okay. The notification and the feedback that I saw us all send was uh, speaking really to the fact that uh, anyone within proximity to that pipeline needs to be notified of the meetings, right. and we ask that there be a, a wider, uh, essentially radius, uh, and in, in particular, in particular, for example, schools where we have a school that's in 500 yards of that pipeline, that every parent of a student in that school will be notified. So, right. I think it's a reasonable expectation, a reasonable, reasonable request, I should say, of Excel without having them mail every single household. Um, so, so, when will we know what exactly they've done? Mr. Benson, they, they Preston Gibson specifically emailed you on June 16th. So with those specific issues. So I think we've, we've done what we can. We're trying to get it out. We're trying to put it in the newsletter. We put it on the website. So we, we're trying to do everything we can. I think it's on Channel 8 tonight, um, and it will be f between now and then. So, Yeah, I've been gone since that time. Uh, but I know I have a phone that I can get emails on, but I, I never saw that over the weekend. Well, anyway, does, is everybody uh, convinced that they're doing the right thing? That they're getting out a notice to the proper number of people? Are you all convinced of that? I mean, to, not to belabor this, I think we all see this as I don't want you to belabor anything. I just want you to tell me, are you convinced? I, I think we all see this as an incredibly urgent issue. Mm -hmm. I think there are limitations on reasonably what we can expect Excel to do from a notification perspective. And I think it's incumbent on us as individuals to individually blast as many people as we can and encourage them to notify as many people as they can in turn. I'm not relying on Excel to get the word out personally. I, I think it's, it's, on, it's incumbent on me to let my neighbors know, to let my friends know, sure. and I would think that each of us need to take a similar tact. Well, I intend and, to do the same thing, but that's, uh, that's not very many people. It's just our neighbors. You know, it, it takes a, a mailing, a timely mailing sent to enough people to get enough people to show up, but well, I mean, I guess well, anyway, it's going to be, it's going to happen, and hopefully, we'll have some people there, and uh, we'll be able to make a, the people will learn what's going on. Um, okay, that was uh, June the second. They showed that they have, uh, there were two other alternatives for the pipeline, and the the the, the proposed or the preferred alternative that they've chosen right down 104th is not the cheapest one. And I haven't really gotten a good answer from them about, well, which one is the cheapest one and why didn't you go with that one? And I got answers like, well, the railroads are too hard to deal with. Uh, CDOT is too hard to deal with. And what I want to find out from Mr. Gaylor is how can we be hard to deal with? So maybe they'll start working with the railroad and CDOT. We can be hard to deal with, too, I think. So um, that's what I want to find out in that executive session. Because what they proposed is not right. OK, enough on Excel. Um, June the 9th, we had an E-470 meeting. And during that meeting, we did increase the speed limit to 75 miles an hour. And before we got out of that meeting, they had already put all the signs up for 75 miles an hour. You left the meeting and it was already up to 75. Uh, the minimum is still 50. We had a presentation involving is this going to increase the liability of E-470 and the conclusion was that it's really not, that people are driving 75 and 80 miles an hour anyway, so putting a speed limit of 75 is really not going to increase the liability. But, uh, and I can't, I haven't really gotten an answer to the question, well, how fast can you drive without getting stopped for a ticket? Nobody wants to answer that question, but just use your own judgment. So, um, the same day, we had the reunion outreach at that reunion park. I appreciate the Park and Recreation Department putting that together for the reunion area. Um, June the 13th, we had the Metro North Development uh, Breakfast here in uh, Council Chambers. Um, and I know we, we've been having, we've had a couple of uh, Ward 2 meetings at 9 a.m. at Stilato's Grocery in Delhi. And at, at the uh, suggestion of several people, we're going to move that to 6 p.m. so that people that work can come to these meetings. 
So it will be uh, the second Tuesday of every month um, at 6 p.m. at Stellato's Grocery in Delhi. Um, well, June 15th, Dr. Cog was canceled, so that's about all I have to report. I was out of town this past weekend, so. Thank you. Councilwoman Carson? Uh, first of all, I'll start with Mr. Marino. Uh, thank you for your attendance. I know you uh, represent the city great. And uh, I've heard rumors that you now have, uh, you're texting back and forth with the president. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, I, I also, like Mr. Benson said, want to uh, thank the city for all the hard work they did up there for the uh, community outreach. Uh, I just loved it. I thought this is exactly what it is that citizens want. Um, I know it had to be a lot of work on the city's part, but I think that uh, the rewards that you reap from that, I love the idea of the different pods and people could go visit whichever ones they were interested in. And unlike uh, a lot of others, I am a, um, I, I have a fetish for hot dogs and I thought that was one of the best hot dogs I had ever had. <laughs> <laughs> so I have no problem with no hamburgers. Um, uh, I did enjoy the hot dogs and derby days. Uh, a lot of hard work had gone into that, and it was enjoyed by all. I took my granddaughter. She had a great time. So thank you to everybody who, who worked so hard on Derby Days. And Mr. Gaylor, my thoughts and prayers are with you and your family. Thank you. Councilman McEldowney? I think we've touched on, touched on quite a bit of it during the uh, Administrative Council business. Um, I apologize for not uh, making it to Derby Days, Derby Days this year. It's, I think, my first time since I got on council that I wasn't there. Um, I am uh, dedicating my early Saturdays and Sundays as of late to putting as many hours and miles on my bicycle as I can. I'll be riding in the uh, MS-150 uh, this coming weekend uh, in support of my mom and others with MS. Uh, we recently learned uh, within the last year that my mom has MS. and. Uh, Upon hearing that, uh, decided to dust off the bike and, and start to get the miles underway again. And so, uh, we'll be uh, leading a small team in our first uh, our first effort. So, um, again, my apologies. I hear it was a great event this year, and the pictures were. It was great to see the pictures from folks on Facebook of the activity. It was uh, looks like it was very well attended and growing every year. Um, I think uh, that's it. I've got. Uh, the Capital Facility Fee Foundation uh, board meeting coming up this Friday, and uh, other than that, the events that were were mentioned previously, the outreach was fantastic. You know, my only my only frustration is that we can't do one in every neighborhood. Um, you know, I think the challenge that we've seen is that uh, when we host it in River Run, people from other neighborhoods don't come. When we hold it in Reunion, we get limited uh, engagement from folks outside. Although I did talk to a few folks who would come from whether it was Buffalo Mesa or uh, Frontera or Foxton Village. So it, it looks like we did get some, some good attendance from outside the immediate neighborhood. Um, but I think, as Ms. Carson said, the, uh, the, the discussions are so great. It, you, you just don't get the chance to have staff interacting with the citizens in that casual environment often enough. And uh, it was neat to, uh, to see our staff at work. And uh, you know, floated around sort of the, the city tent there for a bit. And lots and lots of excitement where uh, Mr. Timms was camped out showing the, uh, the floor plans for the uh, much anticipated King Supers. And so um, it was exciting to see people uh, reacting to those, uh, to those plans. And again, just hats off to the staff that puts that thing together, takes that thing down, slings the hot dogs, cuts the watermelon, and all that fun stuff. So um, great work. Thank you very much. And I look forward to the uh, upcoming outreach at Pioneer Park. Thank you very much. Um, Councilman Moreno? Just on the uh, neighborhood outreach front, I did have an idea. Um, I noticed we had a dunking booth at the neighborhood outreach. If we could put a couple of council, council members in that dunking booth, make it a fundraiser, I think we could fund a couple of those capital improvement projects. I'm just saying. I, I think it's a great idea. <laughs> I've actually been certified by Mr. LaFell on dunk tank uh, sitting, so <laughs> I'm game. Yeah, I think we should do it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, our newest council member, Councilman Diaz, take it away. <laughs> Obviously, as a newbie, I don't really have a whole lot to report. <laughs> um, what, seventh, eighth day into this job? Um, I do want to thank you guys for the appointment. I really appreciate it. Um, I definitely want to thank the city staff for your patience with me. Um, as Laura Bauer and I met on Friday to figure out how all these buttons work and all these screens and really trying to figure out how all that stuff works. 
It's pretty fascinating, actually. I went home and I told my wife it was kind of a field of dreams kind of moment. Um, <laughs> stepping into here was really nice and empty, and it was dark, and I was like, wow, I'm standing up on this podium. How cool. I wanted to take a picture, but I thought Laura might make fun of me. Um, but no, and I do appreciate um, all the support that the staff has given me. Um, and Tracy, thank you for letting me take on Cultural Council and remaining with that. My pleasure. Um, on that note, this is my opportunity to plug that Cultural Council is hosting the Music in the Park concert series every Thursday in July starting at 6.30 p.m. Um, the first three Thursdays it will be at River Run Park. Um, the last Thursday it will be at Pioneer Park. Um, so that's my chance to plug that because that's the only board that I'm on right now, I suppose. Um, and last, I'm excited to go to CML tomorrow. Um, heading up to Vail and trying to learn a little bit more about this. I didn't realize in the first two weeks I was pretty much just going to dive right off the deep end and go straight into a budget planning retreat in the following week, head off to Vail and um, <laughs> do all that stuff. So thank you guys. Thank you. Councilwoman Teeter. Yes, just a few things to echo the thanks uh, to staff for what a great job they did at the outreach picnic. And I really do think it is a good idea to alternate the reunion area and, and back further to the west. Um, I think that was Timig where it was before. Um, secondly, I attended with Brittany the Denver Metro Aviation Breakfast and um, the joint meeting with Brighton City Council at Buffalo Run earned me two new customers for my business. They were in today and last week. <laughs> so anyway, that's called networking. And that's all I have. And also, staff, thank you again for all the work that you put in the retreat last weekend. Thank you. Um, just a couple of things, since it's pretty much been gone over. Um, the planning retreat, I just want to thank staff and everybody that was involved in that. I thought it went pretty well. The peanut thing I thought was very interesting exercise. If only we weren't interested in chewing on them as well as putting them in the bag. <laughs> um, so thank you to everyone for that. Um, I will be coming forward with a public safety crime prevention update in the next few weeks. Probably won't be next week because I think we're pretty full with the agenda, but it'll be soon. So I can update everyone on what went on with their spring meeting. And also I was at the re or the, uh, the reunion outreach. That was a great turnout. Um, I enjoyed the hot dogs as well, and it's just fine with me if we don't have hamburgers. And also I attended Derby Days, and it was really great. The dancers that were there um, were just amazing, and the crowd was one of the biggest I've seen yet. So I think it was a very successful Derby Days. Councilman McEldowney, did you have something else? I, I did. I forgot to say thank you for the for staff for putting the, uh, the budget retreat together last week. Our, our planning slash budget retreat um, and pre-treat uh -huh. pre-treat pre-treat <laughs> and and uh, and I just want to thank council for putting up with my uh, my uh, obvious frustration I, I feel like we've got so much to solve and uh, you feel like we're just poised to make these big big steps if we can just get ourselves sort of all lined up and so um, it was neat to hear the the sidebar discussions when I got to council tonight folks have been sort of obsessing as I know I have on on these things, and so uh, I just want to thank everybody for their uh, for their participation last week, and I'm eager to see how this evolves from here. So thanks to staff, and thanks for council. Thank you. The last thing I have is I wanted to see if everyone would join me in congratulating Councilwoman Kathy Teeter for her new little granddaughter, Allison Danell, who was born on June the 15th. She weighed seven pounds, 14 ounces. And her and her family do reside in Commerce City over in Bell Creek, so congratulations. Grandma Kathy Teeter. If there be no further business to come before our city this evening, we are adjourned. Drive carefully, everyone. Miss Bauer, do you need me? I do. You do? Okay, I'll be right here.